Hey everyone, uh, in this video, I'm going to show you something in Scratch and uh, we're going to do a fun activity. Uh, we're going to visualize the gravitational pull of the planets in our solar system using Scratch. Now, keep in mind that this is not a, an astrophysics accurate video. Uh, it's mostly to play around in Scratch and also to get an idea of what it means to have a dif different gravitational pull for each planet. So what I mean by different gravitational gravitational pull is that when we jump or when, when we throw a ball up in the air or we watch something fall from a tree, it falls at a at a certain speed. When, when uh, something falls down on Earth, it falls at the rate of uh, 9.81 meters per second square that's the velocity uh, on earth every planet in our solar system has a different velocity and uh, so we're going to look at how that might look like if you haven't played around with scratch before it's a free software so go over to scratch.mit.edu sign up for a free account i've already signed up and when you're ready click on the create button the first thing you should see is uh, a screen with some uh, options on the left. We've got motion, look, sound, event, etc. And we have a cat which is called a sprite in uh, in Scratch. So we've got sprites and we've got backdrops. So the first thing we'll do is we'll add a backdrop. So right now the backdrop is just white. Uh, we'll add a backdrop. And since we are talking about space, let's click on the space section and pick one of these things. Uh, now. We could pick anyone. Let's pick this space city too. Okay, so now we have something that resembles what we want, something to do with space. The first thing I want to do is delete the cat sprite. And then the next thing we need to do is add a sprite. So a sprite is, think of it as an actor or something that does stuff over here. So it could be, in this case, it was a cat. We're going to add so some kind of ball. If I do a search for ball I get a bunch of balls and I can pick any one of these let me pick uh, let me pick this just because it's it's empty so I can write on it okay so we have a ball here and you can drag it around the first thing I want to do is uh, call it give it a name so it, it right now just says ball I'm going to call this earth so we will we'll play around with earth first and then we can uh, work on the other planets all right so I have earth uh, it would be nice if, especially if I have many of these balls, one for each planet, uh, if I, uh, if we could see the name of the planet on the, uh, on the ball itself. So to do that, uh, make sure Earth is selected, and then head on over to Costumes, and then you should be able to uh, maybe select one of these colors. So let's pick blue because Earth is the blue planet. We'll add some text, so I'm going to click on the text button there and I'm going to type both. I'll drag it to the center and adjust the size so that it fits within the ball. Okay, and then maybe make it a little more visible. So maybe maybe white or like close to white maybe. Okay. That looks okay. Okay, so that's that's the, the design of it. Uh, next I go back to code, and this is where I write the code for Earth and how it, how it should behave. So what I want is, uh, on the top here you have this uh, green flag, which says go, and what that means is when I click on this, then the animation or the game or whatever we want here should begin. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go to events and then I'm going to drag the when green flag is clicked. Let me make this a little bigger. Okay. So what I want to do is, when I click the green flag, the earth ball should fall down, uh, like the gravity on earth. Okay, so the gravity on earth is 9.81 meters per second square. How do we do that? Uh, we we need something called a loop. Okay, so we have a loop here. Start with a forever loop. And what I want to do is change the uh, position of this. So if you look, if you look here, there's a there's an X and a Y. And 
as I move the earth, you see the number changing. So if I put it somewhere in the center, close to the center, that's uh, that's zero zero. So I can even go there and type in zero zero, and that's supposed to be the the exact center of uh, of this canvas of this backdrop. Uh, so if I move it uh, to the left, the x value goes negative. If I drag it to the right, the x is positive. And if I drag it up, the y becomes positive. And if I drag it down, the y is negative. So that's how this coordinate system works. So I want to start maybe here. So what I want to do is put uh, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. Um, and maybe fill there. So for now, you can also adjust the size. I don't know what the size should be. Uh, let's make it 90. That may or may not be okay. We can always change it later. So, so I have Earth, and I think I like this position. So, uh, so minus, let's make it an even negative 100. And uh, 135. So what we want to do is we want to change the Y value because the Y is up and down and the X is left and right. So if something falls down, I want it to be, uh, I want to, uh, I'm going to have to change the Y value. So I can change the Y value by either decreasing it or increasing it. So if I increase it, it goes up. If I decrease it, it goes down. Right. So it's 118. If I drag it down 57. So it's going lower and lower. So what I want to do is, within this loop, so I say when I click this, then keep looping through this, and every time you loop, change the, change the Y value, so change the Y value, by, remember we're going down, so that's negative, so let's say I put negative 10, okay, and if I run that now, you see it goes down at negative 10. So the question is, and then if I want to stop, I click on the red stop button. Okay, so the question is how how fast do I want it to go? So if I put, let's say, negative 5, then that will go at half the speed. If I click, if I go negative 20, then that would be twice the speed of 10, negative 10. Okay. So the question is, how much do I go? And I think uh, because this is Earth, um, the the Earth's um, if I put negative ten, that that does seem about right. Uh, if I start on top and I click left, maybe that's what a ball might uh, the the speed at which the ball might fall down. Maybe more or less. But what I can do is, since it's really close to the Earth's actual gravitational pull, which is nine point eight one. I'm actually going to go negative 9.81 uh, units. So in this case, it would be uh, this. It's measuring this, I believe, in pixels. Uh, so it's whatever this measure is, whatever one of this is, and uh, uh, it's it's not by second. Uh, so forever, every time this thing runs, uh, it has some kind of you know, 10 milliseconds or 50, 20 milliseconds. Or I don't know exactly how much that is. Uh, but it doesn't really matter because what we care about is the is that the proportion or the relationship, the ratio of uh, Earth with the other planets should be accurate. All right, so I have that. The other thing is I don't want when it goes down. I don't want it to go all the way down because right now when I click on green, it goes all the way to the to the very bottom. So maybe I wanted to uh, let's imagine there's a ground here and I wanted to end about here. So that is. Uh, negative 140 let's round it to negative 140 so I want this to go down until it hits 140 and then to stop so if I look at the control uh, section we had dragged the forever loop we're now going to drag the repeat until so just drag it over here and then so these are both loops. There's the forever loop. Forever has no condition. It just keeps going infinitely. The repeat until repeats, the, the loop repeats until a certain condition is met. And then 
what goes inside here is going to be the same. So I'm going to drag this out of the of, of the forever loop, drag it in here, and then I don't care about forever. So I'm going to right click on that and delete block. And now I'm going to drag the repeat until until it locks onto the when flag is clicked. So the change y value is an oval shape uh, with the value of negative 9.81, while this one is a hexagon. So hexagon shape anywhere in Scratch, so you can see all of these are hexagon shapes. They expect Boolean values, and a Boolean value is something that evaluates to true or false. So you could either put directly true or false, or you can put some kind of condition. And one of the ways of, of uh, finding condition is uh, some of these. So you can say if it, if it touches a particular color, right? So that's a condition. You can see a hexagon here. And a hexagon can go into another hexagon. So I can just wait till the border becomes white and then let go. And then it goes there. But in this case, the color is not going to help because there's uh, this purple all over and there's, there's no uh, constant uh, purple here. Now I could use, if I was doing something like, let's say this blue sky backdrop, then I could say once it touches brown, then stop. And let's take a quick look at that. So I'm going to say touching color. Okay, so I could either drag these around or I can click on this uh, drop here and then choose the brown color. And so now what I say is when when the green flag is clicked, repeat everything inside that until it touches the color blue. So let's put Earth somewhere on top there and click on the green flag. And you can see it stops when it, it hits this color. Now instead of instead of brown, I'm gonna I'm gonna select green. Okay, so it's gonna repeat until it touches green. So let's see how that looks. Drag it on top somewhere, click on the green flag, and it stops right there. And if I put it here, I click the green flag, and it stops right there, and so on. So you, you see how this works. So that's a, a hexagon, which means that either either it's touching green or it's not touching green, right? So it's that's a Boolean value. So that's not what we want here. What we want is, under motion, we care about the Y position, okay? So this, uh, gives you the, it returns back the Y position. So if I double click on that, I get now a negative 50. And so that is here, negative 50. Okay, that's the Y position. So I, I care if the Y position is, so I want to repeat until the Y position is less than we decided negative 140, right? So the, the less than can be found in the operators section. So if I click on that, can see a bunch of things and one of them being greater than, less than, and equal to. And you can see these are all uh, hexagons. So hexagon means I can drag them uh, into that, right? So these are also hexagons. Okay, uh, this is a hexagon. This is not a hexagon, not a hexagon, and so on. So I'm gonna drag a is um, less than. Okay, so the, as the ball falls, the Y value keeps going lower and lower. So I wanted to keep repeating until it reaches negative 140 is what I decided, right? So uh, until the Y position, and now I could go with equals, but the problem with equals is then it's gonna look for exactly negative 140, and that may not happen depending on uh, uh, what the value is, right? So it could jump from let's say negative 139 or 134 okay then minus nine. remember at every uh, at every instant it goes down by negative 9.81 so it would cross the negative 140 and then it would miss that and so you would end up going all the way down right? so that's not going to work uh, if you put y position equals negative 140 but if i put less than then as long as it's above negative uh, 140 it should fall and the moment it hits that or it goes below that it's going to stop so this is what I want uh, drag that in here and so let's see how it reads when 
the green flag is clicked. Repeat everything inside until the Y position is less than negative 140. Okay, so I think that makes sense. Let's test it out. Okay, and that's about 140. And that will be the same no matter where I drag it. Uh, I just remembered, let's go back to the space backdrop. Okay, and that still works. Okay, there you go. So that, that looks about right. Now, the other nice thing would be is I, I don't want to have to drag. So right now I'm only dealing with one ball, but if I had eight balls, I'm gonna drag. Every time I want to run this, I, I don't want to have to drag all the eight balls right on top. So it would be nice if there was a way to set the uh, set this to the beginning, to the very top uh, when it starts. Okay, so the, I want to set the, the, the value here and I'm thinking Mercury, Venus, Earth should be somewhere there. So that's negative, let's say, let's round it up to 100. And you might have to change that. And the Y can be 125. So I like those. So I'm gonna say um, motion and go to, okay, so if I drag the go to uh, block, I can see go to X and Y. So I have to set the X value, so that's negative 100, and the Y value is 125, so it's already set it to the to the right values and I can drag this and I can I can snap it just before the repeat until so what I'm saying is uh, when as soon as I click the green flag I'll set the coordinates of this sprite so whatever selected here to negative 100 and positive 125 and then repeat everything inside the block until the Y position is less than uh, negative 140. So let's see if that works. So let's say I'm, I, I click on that, it goes down, and then I click on it again, and it, it starts from up again. So that's nice. Okay. So that looks about right. Okay. So if I'm happy with that, then I can, uh, instead of having to do this whole process again for each planet, I can right click on this sprite which is earth and i can duplicate it okay so now i've got earth and earth 2 i'm going to drag earth 2 to the left of earth and i'm going to call this uh, venus because the planet just before earth is venus okay so so i have venus here but it still says earth on the on the ball itself so to change that i'm going to have to so this this is something i'll have to change for each uh for each sprite. So I'm going to go here, double click on that, call it Venus, and maybe uh, make it a little smaller. Okay, so that looks good. The next thing I want to do is go to code and then change these values so it works for Venus. So the first thing I want to do is, Venus is just before Earth, so that's about here. And I want to start somewhere here. Now the, the Y is the same. So the Y is 125, that's fine. Uh, the the X, so it's 169, but I want to keep enough for Mercury. Uh, so maybe somewhere there. So that's a negative 164. So I'm going to change that to negative 164. The repeat until is the same because I even Venus should hit about the same area here before it stops. This is going to be different. So the the gravitational pull for Venus is 8.87. That's the velocity. So I'm going to go negative because we're going down. Uh, 8.87 meters per second square. Okay. In this case, it's not meters per second square. Like I said, it's uh, number of pixels. I think these are pixels per whatever the atomic unit for scratch is. So it could be 50 milliseconds, maybe. Okay. Uh, so I have, I think I have that. Well, good now. So if I click on the green flag, you can see Earth is going down a little faster than Venus because Earth is, is going at the rate of negative 9.81. And Venus is going down at a rate of negative 8.87. So I think I have Venus and Earth done. 
Now I'm going to duplicate Venus and so I've got Venus 2 there, drag it to the front and I'm going to call this Mercury. Okay, next it still says Venus so I go into costumes and then I rename this to Mercury and because it's bigger, make it small and drag it to the center. Okay, so I've got Mercury, Venus Earth. So I want Mercury to be on the left there. Okay, so that's negative uh, 210. So let's go to code and we want the X to be negative 210. The Y is the same because it starts from the top there. Uh, the gravitational pull for Mercury is 3.7. So I'm going to change this to negative because we're going downwards. 3.37. And if I run that, okay, so you can see Mercury falls at a much slower rate than everything else. Okay, now that we have just three, the one thing I can see is that these are not equidistant, so I'm, I'm estimating the, the x-axis, but it would be nice if they were all equidistant. So one thing we can do is, we can we can say we want to start with uh, with x being negative 200. Let's uh, round it up to that. Okay, let's say the planets start from here, and then it, uh, and then it keeps, uh, keeps a gap a little gap and then the next one goes, right? So we've got uh, Mercury is uh, 200, uh, Venus is, let's say, negative 150, let's round it, uh, negative 150. Okay, so that looks, up, and I, I think they'll all line up, you can always change it later. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do uh, something called, something else like an op operation. So we had previously dragged the less than operator operation. We're going to drag the um, multiplication one. So here you see plus minus multiplication and division. So I'm going to drag the multiplication one. And I'm going to go uh, negative 200. Okay. Actually wait, I'm going to do, I'm going to drag the plus and the multiplication. And uh, I want to say negative 200 plus plus in this case Venus is the the second planet so let's go one times and then the the difference between the two is uh, this was 200 and this was 150 so 50 So this would, so this calculation would ensure that they are equidistant from each other. So, so instead of uh, the, instead of the x coordinate being negative 164, I'm going to drag this. So you can see they're both oval shaped, which means I can drag this into that. Okay. So uh, if I run that now, okay. So I've got Venus at uh, supposedly at the right. Uh, distance from the left. Now let's do the same for Mercury. So I'm going to replace that with the plus and the times and I'm going to say negative 200, that's the leftmost boundary, plus we've decided uh, 50 is the is the uh, is the uh, distance between the two times and then starting at zero because we in this case we, we just want negative 200 so 50 times zero is going to be zero and, and negative 200 plus zero is negative 200 okay and then i drag that into the x okay so that seems about right okay and so now i want earth to be the same way so i click on earth drag the plus and the multiplication Multiplication goes there, and I want negative 200 plus 50 times, and then we've got 0, 1, 
through drag that into X and then they should be so now they're all at an equal equal distance from each other good so now let's do the next one which is Mars so right click on Earth duplicate and the thing is now I have all of these the way I want so uh, first thing is rename this to Mars and then I go to costumes rename this to Mars as well sure it's in the center go back to the code uh, and then add one to add one to this so this is three okay and the Y change Y by so the gravitational pull for Mars is 3.71 and I gotta make sure it's negative because we are moving downward now when I click the green flag, okay, they all drag down. Mars, you can see, is uh, Mars and Mercury are the slowest of the four. Okay, so now let's now we're ready for Jupiter. So right click, duplicate Jupiter costumes Jupiter. Make it a little small. Center it. Back to code. Increment this by one. So that's four. And this is going to be negative. And the gravitational pull for Jupiter is 24.79. That's the highest of all. Uh, except for the sun. 24.79. Okay. So now let's see how, and you can see now Jupiter is going to drop the quickest by a long shot. Okay, so you can see Jupiter went a lot faster than the others. Okay, so now we are, we are speeding the process. Let's go duplicate again. This is Saturn. Costumes, change this to Saturn. Center it. Back to code. Change this to 5. Change this to negative. And Saturn's pull is 10.44. Okay, let's run that. Now let's go for Uranus. Um, rename the sprite. Costume. Okay, so zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. negatives and Uranus is 8.69 yep I found that good and the last one is Neptune duplicate Neptune costume Neptune Resize it, center it, okay, let's change that to 7, and Neptune's is 11.15. There you have it, all the planets. Okay. Uh, and now there's some place here, maybe you could add Pluto or you could uh, increase the space a bit. So uh, instead of 50, you could go 55. You'll have to go and change all of them to 55. OK, 
Okay, let's see how it looks. Okay, looks a little better. There you have it. And then uh, Sprite has a, you can maximize the screen. You can look at it full screen and then do the same thing. So click on the green flag. There you go. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something uh, from scratch and also um, imagine what it might be like if uh, these different balls fell uh, at the speed of the, the gravitational pull for each of the planets. This is what it would look like. Okay, uh, I hope you like this. Hope you learned something. And uh, please like and subscribe my channel. And uh, I will see you next time. Bye. Yep.